Hello, good afternoon. I'd like to thank the organizing committee for the invitation for this lecture. And as a dermatologist, I'll share with you my impressions and the experience with PDT in our, in our department at the Maral Carvalho Cancer Hospital. Maral Carvalho Cancer Hospital completed 100 years in 2015, and since 1970, it has been a cancer hospital, becoming one of the most important cancer hospitals of the country. And here we have our PDT team. Since 2008, we start a partnership with São Carlos Institute of Physics for PDT research in skin cancer. We all know that skin cancer is the most frequent cancer in the world, and it accounts to two to three million new cases every year. According to our National Cancer Institute, more than 200,000 new cases of skin cancer are estimated every year. Skin cancer can be classified in melanoma and non-melanoma, and there are more than 80 different types of skin cancer depending on which cell is of the skin is affected. For instance, here we have a Merkel cell carcinoma, which arises from the Merkel cell located on the papillary dermis. Or we can have an angiosarcoma arising from the vessels, a dermatofibular sarcoma arising from the soft tissue cells, a malignant melanoma arising from the malignant, malignant melanocytes located on the basal layer of the epidermis. Or sometimes when some abnormal lymphocytes leave the blood vessels and go to skin, we can see these lesions of cutaneous lymphoma, and so on. But we should keep in mind there are more than 80 different types of skin cancer. Night five of skin cancer are non melanoma, but fortunately, basal cell carcinoma comprises 80% of this number. The data from Amaral Carvalho Hospital show that more than 1,000 new cases of skin cancer are diagnosed and treated every year, and this number is increasing as we can observe here. For instance, in 2016, where 2,000 200, no, 2, cases of skin cancer were treated. And this number is increasing. The number of skin cancer is increasing not only in this hospital, but also in all the world. The profile of, of no melanoma skin cancer that we observe around the world is the same that we, we see in this hospital. The data from 2000 to, to, to 2018 show that no melanoma skin cancer mostly affects elderly people, people who are chronically exposed to sunlight. But fortunately, most of no melanoma skin cases, skin cancer cases are diagnosed at early stage. As we observe here, 77% of stage one, the most initial stage. Talking specifically about basal cell carcinoma, there are many treatment options for basal cell carcinoma, depending on histological subtype, size, depth, and localization. We can treat by cryotherapy, curettage, pharmacolo pharmacological treatment like imiquimod, radiotherapy, photodynamic therapy, but the gold standard treatment for basal cell carcinoma is surgical excision because we can achieve 100% of complete response. Here, a basal cell carcinoma né, that can be simply excised through a fusiform excision like this, or sometimes may require a flap like here or like here. It's another kind of flap. But, important, but the important thing in surgery is that we can access the surgical marine status if the tumor was completely removed. So if I'm saying such good things about surgery, a first, was, well, a first quest, good question would be, why should we choose for topical PDT? Of course, I will not choose PDT in this case. 
where the basal cell carcinoma were to was totally removed through surgery, and also we could, have, could offer to the patient an excellent outcome. But in this case, the PDT was the best option, considering the size and the localization of this basal cell carcinoma. If, if we had performed the surgery in this case, probably the resulting scars would be disfiguring. Another good question might be, how far can we go with PDT? Or is there any improvement that we can make with, with PDT? So in order, in order to answer these questions, we started our work. The first thing in our partnership was the development of new light sources devices, which were sponsored by Brazilian government and other institutions. This first device was developed for the treatment of cancerization field. In cancerization field, we can find the actinic keratosis, which is a pre-malignant lesion described with a progression to squamous cell carcinoma that ranges from 4 to 16% per year. That's the importance of treating actinic keratosis. So with this device, we could perform a lot of studies and I will present the results of one of them. In this study, we treated 140 patients with widespread actinic keratosis on upper limbs. A 20% mal cream was applied over the forearms and hands and covered for three hours. After this, the limbs were illuminated with this device for 40 minutes with a corresponding, with a delivered energy of 36 joules per square centimeter. With this device, we could achieve 68% reduction in a number of actinic keratosis after 30 days uh, PDT. The median number of per patient of actinic keratosis dropped from 73 before to 23 after PDT. Despite using a large area device, we can observe this here that the severe pain was observed only in the first 10 minutes of illumination. And as time was passing, the severe pain was decreasing. Here's the typical situation of this study. A patient with widespread actinic keratosis on both of her limbs before and 30 days after PDT. Another case with multiple actinic keratosis on hands, and then an excellent outcome 30 days after. So with, we can conclude that with this device, we could simplify the treatment of widespread actinic keratosis with a 68% reduction and also an excellent outcome for the patient. And despite using a large area device, the most of patients were classified as moderate pain. And we are still developing another device to improve the technique uh, of, of cancerization field treatment. Another device is this one, that we can perform the treatment and also follow the fluorescence during the treatment. As we can observe here, the fluorescence before treatment and the consumption of PP9 after treatment. After the development of the, this, this device, we performed our first randomized trial. It was a comparison of two different photosensitizers to achieve the best cure rates for small nodular basal cell carcinomas. There were almost 600 patients randomized in three groups, the surgical group, the mall PDT group, and the ALA PDT group. First, the lesion was curated and taken to histological evaluation. Then, a 20% mole cream or a 20% ALA cream was applied and covered with a plastic film and aluminum foil to avoid the prefrontal activation. After three hours of occlusion, the lesion was illuminated with an irradiance of 125 milliwatts per square centimeter for 20 minutes corresponding to a delivered energy of 150 joules per square centimeter. Following the standard protocol, after seven days, another session was performed 
using the same parameters. After 30 days, the treated area was clinically evaluated and taken to a two millimeter punch biopsy. Here we can observe just a mild erythema with no sign of residual basal cell carcinoma. According to histological evaluation of all the patients, as expected, the surgical group achieved the best cure rate. We had 90% of complete response for the surgical group, which was significant difference between uh, the, the PDT group. But the PDT group had an expressive response. We achieved 86% of complete response at the third day biopsy for mol PDT and 90% of complete response for ALA PDT with no significant difference between them. So with these results, we can conclude that the dermatologist can choose any of these photosensitizers achieving the same results for the treatment of small nodular basal cell carcinoma with no statistical difference at the third day biopsy. And how about the follow-up results? Here we have the long-term follow-up, six years of follow-up, and there is still no significant difference between the photosensitizers. We observe a disease-free survival in six years of 78% for ALA PDT and 82% for mol PDT. We are extremely high rates. If we consider that most of the lesions were located on head and neck area, a difficult area for illumination. Here are some results. Here, uh, basal cell carcinoma. The basal cell carcinoma is here. This is an evite, it's not a basal cell carcinoma. So here, the basal cell carcinoma before ALA tre treatment. And here, six months after. Another excellent outcome with, of this basal cell carcinoma treated with mol PDT here before and six months after. Here, in, in my opinion, I'd like to say that one of the most important things that lead us to these excellent results was the size of the nodular basal cell carcinoma of this study. None of the basal cell carcinoma indicated for PDT treatment of this study was higher than 15 millimeters. And this is one of the largest PDT that we, the uh, CBC, BCC that we treated before PDT and here, six months after, showing an excellent outcome. So let's move on. What else can we do to improve this protocol? We know that the PDT approved protocol, the international PDT approved protocol for basal cell carcinoma consists in two sessions, one week apart. But sometimes coming back to, to hospital, to perform the second part of this treatment immediately, one week after, may be very difficult for these elderly patients because of their comorbidities and the distance from the hospital. It would be useful if we could perform all the PDT treatment in just one single visit, providing the same results, but in a fast and a more comfortable treatment. So, in just one single visit, the lesion would be diagnosed, and in about five hours, the patient could go back home in the same day treated. It would be good for the patient, and also good for the system with cost reduction. Could we do that? So, let's see how this single visit protocol works. Just like the standard protocol, the lesion was curated and taken to histological evaluation, then a 20% mole cream was applied and covered. After three hours, this lesion was illuminated with an irradiance of 125 milliwatts per square centimeter for 20 minutes, corresponding to a delivered energy of 150 joules per square centimeter. And immediately after this illumination, the lesion received, oh, sorry. The lesion received another application 
of 20% mall cream and was covered again, but now for only one hour and 30 minutes. After this, the lesion was illuminated using the same parameters as before, and the patient then could go back home in the same day treated. After 30 days, the treated area was also evaluated and submitted to a two millimeter punch biopsy to uh, evaluate the effectiveness of the PDT. So since January 16, we've been evaluating the effectiveness of this new PDT protocol for superficial basal cell carcinomas, for nodular basal cell carcinoma, and Bowen disease. And we, uh, we have also been evaluating the pain during the treatment and the follow-up recurrency rate. So I'll first I'll present the results of the superficial lesion. We treated 111 superficial basal cell carcinoma in 72 patients and 48 Bowen disease in 40 patients. The superficial basal cell carcinoma had an average 13 millimeters diameters, ranging from 3 to 48, and the Bowen disease had 20 millimeters diameters, ranging from 4 to 70 millimeters. The superficial, most of the superficial basal cell carcinoma were located on trunk, while most of the Bowen disease were located on upper limbs. They had an equal distribution of gen gender, and the average age was 67 years old. At the third day after biopsy, we could observe a complete response of 90% of for 97% um, of for ba superficial basal cell carcinoma, and 94% of complete response for Bowen disease. And these are extremely high rates if we've, we can compare with su surgery. This PDT protocol achieved the clearance similar to surgery results. Here are some examples of one superficial basal cell carcinoma located on trunk. Here a closer view before PDT and third days after PDT, showing just a mild erythema. Another excellent outcome for this 17 millimeter superficial basal cell carcinoma, 30 days after PDT and six months later. Up to now, we have the data of two years of follow-up when we can observe 90% of disease-free follow-up for superficial basal cell carcinoma and 91% disease-free follow-up for Bowen disease. And these are extremely high rates. If we compare to other studies, we can find, find only up to 80% of disease-free survival in just 12 months. So with these results, we can be comfortable to, to give this protocol, to offer this protocol as a first-line treatment for superficial basal cell carcinoma and also Bowen disease. And considering the superficial lesions, one of the most important uses of PDT, in my opinion, is the PDT in is in large area uh, superficial lesion. As we can observe here, uh, basal cell carcinoma in a difficult area for surgical treatment. Here, uh, ba a Bowen disease on the hand, and here, after small PDT. We can observe an excellent outcome, and in this case, a surgical graft was avoided. And this other basal cell carcinoma, in this case, a surgical flap was avoided. And we have just a mild uh, hyperchromic central area uh, after six months from PDT. So, let's talk about the nodular lesions. We treated 220 nodular basal cell carcinoma, less than one centimeter diameters in 16, 116 patients with um, same distribution, almost the same distribution of sex and an average age of 62 years old. Different from the superficial lesions, the nodular lesions were mostly located on head and neck area. And despite this, 
they had a complete response of 93% at the third day after biopsy. So this is a rate that is almost similar to surgery response, where we can achieve 95 to 100% of complete uh, cure. In this graph, we have the average of pain score during the illumination. We can observe just small values for the both sessions, remember that was performed at the same day. In gray, the first session, and red, the second session, but with no significant difference between them. Here are some results. A nodular basal cell carcinoma before and 30 days after PDT. Another basal cell carcinoma of five millimeters, 30 days after, and six months after PDT. And here, a, basal cell, a nodular basal cell carcinoma before, and here, a recurrence, six months after PDT. But how do I know it's a recurrence? Fortunately, we have a dermoscopy that we can it, that can help us to find the, some specific patterns and make the, different, the diagnosis of recurrence, like here. But we are still improving this, trying to perform some response, to have some response for differentiating benign and malignant lesions with these devices. But let's come back to our excellent results. Uh, another basal cell carcinoma before and six months after PDT. This is another, another one, an excellent outcome, six months after, and here two years after PDT, showing an excellent follow-up. And here, since now we have two years of follow-up for nodular basal cell carcinoma, showing 80% of disease-free follow-up for nodular basal cell carcinoma. It's not so high, but it's important, considering that we are, treating, we are treating lesions located at head and neck area, and also we are talking about nodular lesions. So we can conclude that if precisely indicated, this new PDT single visit protocol is an excellent option for non-melanoma skin, can skin cancer with excellent cure rates, sometimes comparable to surgery, but with some advantages such as aesthetic results and a more comfortable treatment for an elderly patient. So uh, I'd like to say that it's not a one, uh, just one person work, but it's a multidisciplinary team that we are working together for a main purpose, the well-being of our elderly patients. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much for your talk and for the impressive uh, result that you're having clinically. Uh, I would like to know, like, for the single um, visit, do you have uh, two irradiation time? Is it because you irradiate uh, the photosensitizer are fully activated after these two irradiation? And also, I would like to know, uh, why don't you test on melanoma and cervical cancer? Are you also planning to use that? Um. The first question was uh, that we performed just one photosensitizer, isn't it? No, yeah. I'm talking about irradiation. You inject and then you irradiate twice, if I understood. Uh, the, the, single, the, the, singular, the, the regular PDT, isn't it? We performed using two different photosensitizers. We used MOL PDT and ALA PDT in two groups, almost 200 of patients uh, divided into, randomized into groups. We, uh, we also had a control group that was ch surgical group. Then we could compare the effectiveness of the, these both hot, hot sensitizers, and we, we find that there was no difference between them. Both MOL PDT and AOLA PDT provide uh, a statistical similar response. But 
Sorry. Can you provide like two irradiation for one visit so that the patient doesn't have to pay for the anesthetic and to uh, reduce the cost? Okay, the, the second protocol, that's the single visit protocol that we perform all the treatment in just one day. Yes, with this protocol, we, we started using just more PDT. We didn't start comparing with other photosensitizers, ALA PDT. So all this study, this 200 basal cell carcinoma, this uh, 100 Bowen and superficial basal cell carcinoma, were performed using just the same photosensitizer, the mol, the, the mol metinoaminolevolinic acid. Okay. Okay. Hi, Gabriela. Hi. Uh, so I was wondering that in this two-session PDT protocol, I always thought that the, the when the patient come for the second session, the lesion was not the same. Like if it had it had been like uh, part of it had been treated in the first session and all those areas is inflamed and everything. So I believe that the all of penetration and the uptake is different. So would you think that if we optimize, for example, the, the ALA dose and the light dose for a second session, since it's not the same anymore, it could have like a different medical outcome of cure rate? It's, that's a good question. It's one thing that we can um, research because we, we decided to perform just uh, the, the light of the, the dose of light as the same as the standard protocol. And so we have just one bias that was the, performed the, the, all the treatment in one day. Now further we can start um, another research and probably um, modifying the, the re radiance and, and so on. Maybe we, we, we could, uh, don't, doesn't need for a second session the same amount of light or the same Probably. amount of aloe? Yes. We, we had a, um, another short study that uh, we started with uh, low irradiance. It was, I remember it was uh, 100 joules uh, in total but it was not superior, so that's why we, we decided to follow just the standard protocol for now, and before having some experience, we, maybe we can... Optimize. Maybe we can optimize this, yes. Hi, it's Hello. a similar question. <coughs> I want to know how you planned this uh, second experiment with the single day treatment. Yeah. Why it was one hour and a half uh, uh, pre radiation time for the second exposure? We have a, uh, one study that we published that we measured the amount of portoporphyrin uh, before the illumination. And one hour and a half is the, when you achieve the maximum of, uh, of protoporphyrin. Then you can find a plateau. That, but it, we also have the upgrade, but not so high. So in this study, uh, one and a half hour was the maximum. That's why we, we decided for, for this, this time. But why was it different from the first uh, radiation that was three hours, right? Yes, because then you can get in, into a, um, a medical universe. Uh, let me show you. Um, when you are treating a patient, uh, the routine that it more, normally um, it comes from the patient can um, travel several of kilometers to find us and then we could we had to provide this quick this fast uh, treatment because we cannot forget they are elderly they have other comorbidities that sometimes they not can wait for all the three hours of the first treatment and then wait for more three hours and when you and when you can um, put just all these things in five hours, it comes. Um, it sounds very good for the patients with a patient that won't, don't want to stay there for all the but time. Why the first irradiation? Uh, can the first irradiation only take one and a half hour of pre irradiation time as well, and then be like a total of three hour wait? I, I didn't get it. We, we have a, the standard protocol is three hours yeah. of occlusion. 
Then we started with the, the, first, uh, the first session as, the, as the, the standard protocol, and then we could short this second, uh, the second session to, be, to fit one day treatment. Uh -huh. So otherwise, if we can make the diagnosis at, 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 at 11 o'clock, uh, I, would, I wouldn't ha have the, the able time for the patient perform all the treatment and take this trans the transportation back to, to his city. Okay? okay, it's a logistic that we can, uh, when we are planning uh, uh, the, the, the treatment of, of the patient, we can have also in mind the logistic of the, the coming back and then go back to their city, um, and that's it. Okay, thank you. More questions? So let's thank you again, Professor thank you. Gabriel.